Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Coffee with Craig, where we talk about all things firearms, firearms policy, politics, culture, media, you name it. We talk about it right here on Coffee with Craig. So please take a moment, like and share the program so that your friends can join in the conversation. Also, if you haven't already done so, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. And in both cases, make sure you hit the notification button. That way you get the alerts as soon as we go live. Finally, please take a moment and visit fpcgear.com that's fpcgear.com it is the place to go to get all of your pro 2a swag i'm talking t-shirts coffee mugs hoodies you name it it's all right there and the best part about it is every dollar that you spend goes right back into the fight for our right to keep and bear arms so you can support the second amendment and you can look good doing it that's fpcgear.com now folks you guys know that you know the second amendment is under attack no matter where you are it just seems like People are going after your right to be able to keep and bear arms. So much so that in some cases, they are trying to basically call things firearms that are not firearms. Well, because they're scary. Well, there is such a case that is taking place in the state of Pennsylvania. And to talk a little bit about it, you guys all know, you, you guys know him. You guys love him. He is one of my favorites on the show to talk about in particular stuff that's going on uh, th uh, there in the state of Pennsylvania, and that would be our good friend, Mr. Joshua Prince. Mr. Prince, how are we doing today? Doing well, Craig, and yourself? I'm doing, I am doing excellent. I'm doing excellent. Um, so, all right, I, I got to have you tell me, tell me a little bit about what's going on with this case there in, uh, in Pennsylvania. So a couple weeks ago, we saw uh, Pennsylvania Attorney General Josh Shapiro issue what he called a legal determination in response to a request by the Pennsylvania State Police where he set forth criteria as to what the Pennsylvania State Police should consider in determining whether some object constitutes a firearm. Uh, immediately after issuing that legal opinion, he held a press conference with uh, Governor Wolf here in Pennsylvania, where he said he had now banned 80% receivers. Now, what's interesting is in his legal opinion, there is no discussion in that determination of anything like 80% receiver, 80% lower. None of those terms are found anywhere in that legal determination. It just simply provided several different criteria to be considered and applied against any particular object to determine whether or not it constitutes a firearm. Immediately after that legal determination was issued, the Pennsylvania State Police took it as a direction from both Attorney General Shapiro as well as Governor Wolf that whatever are 80% receivers, they're all banned. And that now to transfer a 80% receiver to a non-prohibited person, you have to go through a background check. Um, and the secondary issue to that is that the Pennsylvania State Police was not prepared for those types of background checks or even how they're going to uh, be able to handle them and what information a dealer would have to submit to them because as we know it's just a hunk of material whether it be aluminum steel plastic it's just a hunk of material so what is it that the dealer is going to be telling the Pennsylvania State Police they are transferring to this individual? So there's a whole host of issues. The Pennsylvania State Police only on its electronic e pick system, so that's our electronic Pennsylvania instant check system, put up a notice saying that uh, all dealers must perform background checks on anything of what they call an 80% receiver, which again, not defined anywhere. Um, and that unfortunately PSP is not prepared for that and therefore you can no longer sell uh, any whatever are 80% receivers until such time as the Pennsylvania State Police uh, implements a, a policy and procedure on how the dealers are to do that. Okay, so just so you know, we dealt with something very, very similar here in the state of California. And, and I have to tell you, one of my favorite times testifying before the legislature was where we talked about this particular bill. And I noticed in the legal opinion as I read it, um, that they talked about, once again, uh, that it was uh, readily convertible. In other words, if you could look at it and determine that it could be converted into a into a uh, 
firearm, well then therefore it now is going to be a firearm and subject to everything relating to firearms. And that's, that's pretty much along the same lines of what they're talking about here, right? Absolutely. And the problem is there is nothing in the law that is an 80% receiver. Uh, the law doesn't define what an 80% receiver is. All 80% receiver or 80% lower refers to is something that is not a firearm. Um, and so this poses a lot of issues because we don't know what exactly the Attorney General and now the Pennsylvania State Police are actually regulating. If you go on YouTube and online, you can find examples of an individual who took a shovel and turned it into an AK-47 receiver and then literally took the rest of the shovel and turned it into uh, a full firearm. Um, so again, we don't know what all objects are encompassed within this. And I mean, obviously, if I own a Lowe's or a Home Depot or uh, some uh, metal shop, I might have grave concerns right now because there is no understanding of what exactly is being regulated and what is not. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to share. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm going to share with you a video of my testimony. And, and I'm telling you, it was his, it was hysterical. Hold, hold on just a second. I'm gonna, all right, I'm gonna, I, folks, I'm gonna, you guys watch this just real quick. This is going to take about a minute. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee, uh, my name is Craig Deleuze. I'm here on behalf of the Firearms Policy Coalition in Opposition. Quite simply put, uh, AB 1673 defines items as firearms that are not firearms. In fact, the term that is used specifically in here has to do with the term can be readily converted. And I'll give you an example. This here is a block of aluminum. The only thing that separates this from being a firearm and that item over there is a CNC machine and the experience to know how to use it. By definition, it is readily convertible. And I would ask the author, where would you like us to put the serial number? Also, this is an unfinished lower receiver for an AK-47. As you can see, with the exception of some holes and divots, it's not dissimilar from a piece of sheet metal that one would pick up at Lowe's, pick up at Ace Hardware, uh, or would pick up at Home Depot. So I would ask the author, are we, going to are we going to have stations at every home, at every one of these hardware stores, and require them to actually serialize this because this is in fact readily convertible. Finally, I distributed around uh, an example. This is a blog post that I share with each and every one of your staff members. This is an example of an individual who took a shovel and converted it into an AK-47. As you can see, he didn't use sophisticated tools. He simply used the resources that were available to him, thus rendering it readily convertible. I would ask the author once again, where would you like us on the shovel to put the serial number? This bill is grotesquely vague. And I believe that, that even the language that is being proposed to, to replace it is additionally vague. In fact, your own consultant said that it is so vague that it might be rendered by the courts void for vagueness. Um, all of that aside, the idea that if someone is going to go and commit a crime, they're going to manufacture a weapon, that they are going to put all of the ugly features that you deem to be assaulty or assault weapon features and put them on the firearm and then oh by the way we're going to go get a serial number is in fact ludicrous <laughs> so now just josh just so you know so at the end of that testimony one of the most anti-gun members of the legislature uh he was the chair of the committee said you know i don't know what just happened but someone made a gun out of a shovel um we're gonna have to hold this bill over and that's but that just shows the uh, absurdity of some of the stuff that they're proposing in this particular case. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's the, the real issue is no one knows exactly what all is being regulated. So uh, we did end up filing suit right away, uh, requesting an emergency injunction. That suit's backed by Firearms Policy Coalition. Uh, it is one of the uh, plaintiffs in the matter. We also have Landmark Firearms, LLC, U.S. Rifle LLC and Polymer AD Inc., uh, all of which are plaintiffs in the action, uh, where we're challenging this. Because again, no one knows exactly what is being regulated and what is not. Uh, and what's interesting is some of our plaintiffs have uh, non-firearm objects, which is what we're referring to them in our petition for review, that have been analyzed by ATF. And ATF says, no, these are not firearms. Yet, Based on what the Pennsylvania State Police seems to be contending, they're saying that, yes, they are. So it's going to be really interesting to see exactly 
how this all unfolds. And we actually just got notice that the court has scheduled a hearing on the matter for January 21st. So we'll have to wait and see what the court does there. Wow. That, well, that's good news. It's good to see that this is moving so quickly. Um, one of the things, though, that there's also an issue here in California, not only that, I mean, now they're requiring background checks. Well, they're not really background checks, but they're calling them background checks on ammunition. And now they're, they've now added one on what they're calling precursor parts. And th the problem is, is that they, <laughs> they don't understand the technology well enough to know that, look, in order for this to really be, is, is the one thing, I'm not a lawyer, but for this to be legally binding, you have to give me a clear definition. And once I have a clear definition, I, I, I have the right to walk right up to that line as long as I don't go over it. Correct. That I'm in compliance with the law. And what makes me frustrated is every time we comply with the law, they say, oh, well, you just found a loophole in the law. You're trying to get around the law. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm trying to comply with the law. Right. Exactly right. And, and, and also, because we're dealing with criminal statutes, we also have constitutional issues that come into play. So vagueness, if something isn't uh, exactingly clear, we also have the rule of lenity, uh, which basically says that if something isn't clear, uh, that inures to the defendant's favor because of the fact that we can't be prosecuting people when they weren't placed on notice of the fact that this was unlawful conduct. <laughs> Oh, I cannot even believe. Anyway, hey, thank you so much. Hey, how can folks uh, how can folks follow the case and follow the work that you're doing? So FPC does have it up on their website. Uh, it is uh, Landmark Firearms LLC at all versus Evanchik. It's Col uh, Colonel Evanchik E V A N C H I C K. Uh, you can just do a Google search for that with FPC and you'll be able to find all the information. FPC is putting all the pleadings and everything up there. Uh, so definitely check it out. And if you're in a position to be able to support uh, that litigation, I, I know FPC and myself would greatly appreciate it. Excellent. Josh, thank you so much for all the good work that you do. Very much appreciate you. Uh, we'll look forward to talking to you again real soon. My pleasure, brother. You have a good one. Stay safe out there. All right. You too. All right, everybody. Well, hey, that's going to be it for today's Coffee with Craig. We very much appreciate you guys tuning in. We appreciate you liking and sharing the program, telling your friends about the Firearms Policy Coalition. We are the home in the fight for civil rights. Got to use them or you're going to lose them. You guys take care. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.